Hi guys, Brian Connolly here with what I believe is the word of the Lord for 2014. And, and I know up to this point we've heard a lot of people saying different things about this year and things that are coming and what this year means and, and what's available to us. And, and there's a common thread that keeps showing up and I'll be talking about that here in a little bit. Uh, there's, there's this thing that Jesus would often say that I really believe characterizes what it is that we're stepping into. He would use a, a phrase like this in John 4 and John 5. He talked about a time coming and a time now is. And I believe there are things that God is doing currently right now in our midst for preparation uh, for the bigger picture. And 2014 really holds the key uh, to what it is that, that God's doing and what's available to us. What we've already entered into, but already what's coming. It sounds kind of paradoxical to say a time coming and a time now is. Uh, but that's really what I believe is upon us right now in this time. But before we unpack 2014, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, two of the things that God was showing me in 2013 that were prophetically pointing to what it was that God is doing now currently and wanting to do in our midst in 2014. Um, a year ago, my wife and I found out that we were pregnant with identical twin girls. And we struggled for a very long time uh, with their names, what we were going to call them. And we'd throw names out from time to time. And, and this was going to be number three and number four. So my wife and I are very blessed to have four beautiful and, and healthy and, and just awesome uh, girls. And, uh, and one of the names that we knew right away was going to be Hannah. We can't explain it. It was just one of those things where you just knew that you knew that you knew. But we struggled with naming the second one. And, and just to make a long story short, uh, the Lord in, in, uh, in July of 2013 said, I want you to read about Hannah in the Bible. Now, before I even say this, let me just make mention of the fact that my wife and I were kicking around the name Shiloh. And, uh, and there were some things and hesitancies behind it. My, my wife was really looking for some solid confirmation. And, uh, and she got it uh, after I had read 1 Samuel chapter 1 because Hannah would go to Shiloh with her husband, Elkanah. And Elkanah had another wife by the name of Penina. And Penina had many children. Hannah had none. And, uh, and it was a time of barrenness in her life. And she would go year after year, the Bible says, up to Shiloh and cry out to God, asking God to open up her womb because she had this groaning that's inside of her. And what I believe is the things that we've been groaning for inside of us, I know Romans 8 talks about three different kinds of groanings, the groaning of creation, the groaning that we have within us to be to be honestly addressed and, and adorned with, with the eternity that's waiting for us, but also the groaning of the Spirit within us. And this is what I've learned about prayer, is the groaning inside of you far outweighs any eloquence of speech you bring to God in prayer. That groaning, that thing that you're hungering for and desiring for, God sees, and I believe this, that, that that groaning is not your good idea. I believe that that has been placed there by God as a result of you delighting in Him and Him giving you the desire of your heart. That desire has come from Him because it's the thing He wants to accomplish and do in your life. You're His workmanship, created for good works, according to Ephesians 2.10, before the foundation of the world. So this son, this son that Hannah was crying out for, was not her idea. It wasn't a result of, of jealousy towards Penina. It was the fact that God wanted to bring a voice uh, to Israel. He wanted to bring and release a prophetic voice uh, because Samuel was the will of God in the same way that John the Baptist was the will of God. And you have Zacharias and Elizabeth crying out for a son advanced in years, which is another word to everybody that you didn't miss it yet. You Just because you might be a little bit advanced in years or, or that thing that says, you know, if I could go back, I'd do it all over again. You haven't missed God's timing. I truly believe that in your life. And he's, he, can, he can cause any one of us to make up for lost time. But God sent the angel Gabriel to Zechariah while he was performing the priestly duties. And Gabriel came to him and said this, your petition, Zechariah, has been heard. And I want everybody watching to know your petition has been heard. Not because you prayed the 100th time. He heard you the first time. He heard Zacharias and Elizabeth the first time because their desire was pure. And some of the things that have been withheld from us don't have anything to do with an impure motive. Some things are strictly a timing issue with God. But I believe the timing is about to be fulfilled in your life in 2014. The things you've been asking for, like Hannah, desperately, day and night. See, nobody wants to talk about the year after year, but every single time Hannah went and prayed, she had a decision and a choice to make. Am I going to throw in the towel and say, well, what's different about this time, or am I going to persevere? And I want you to know your perseverance has brought you to this place, and the Lord is putting before us a choice that we have to make persevere and go through or throw in the towel and forfeit because it doesn't mean that he's going to change his love towards us in any way but the choices we make this year will solely determine the course and direction of, of the working and the move of God in our life and he's put a choice before us and it's all up to us what we have to decide to do but I felt like the Lord was saying much like Hannah the time of barrenness has come to an end 
because it says after a while towards the end of 1 Samuel 1 it says the Lord remembered Hannah another way of saying that is, is like this the Lord went into action on her behalf and I want you to know the Lord has gone into action for you he has heard you he's remembered you in the same way he did with the woman in Luke 18 who kept going before the unrighteous judge and would not stop until she's been heard until she was heard and God called that faith that persistence that perseverance and, uh, and I want you to know that you've been heard the things you've been knocking for, the things you've been asking for and seeking for. God was prophetically speaking to me through July of 2013 concerning my identical twin girls that, that as we go into, because Shiloh is our prayer closet, that place where we go, because the promises of God are not dependent on your prayer life. They're conceived through your prayer life and in your prayer life. And Samuel was God's idea, and God went into action for Hannah, opened up her womb, and gave birth to the prophetic voice. Listen, if God birthed the prophetic voice to Israel through a desperate woman, what does he want to do through your desperation? That's a word for you right now. Another thing that I would see throughout 2013 towards the end was uh, I kept seeing the number 11, and it was everywhere. It would show up on clocks, in my car, at home iTunes asked me, would you like to download the latest software version, 11.1.1? I got in the car one day to leave from the church to home and it said on my odometer, 111,100 miles. I drive home. It's exactly 11 miles from uh, my office to home. And when I got in the car the next morning, my odometer read 111,111 miles. Now, I began to think that God was talking to me uh, through Hebrews 11 because God had shown me that Hebrews 13, or that, that 2013 was a year of faith. It was a year of perseverance. There are things that God did in our midst as signs and, and wonders to show us what perseverance opens the door to and what it brings in your life. Because even in Revelation, it would say things like this, according to the seven churches, the letters that were written, to he who overcomes. There's something about overcoming and persevering and not let going in, in, in let, letting go even in the face of difficult circumstances because he who promised, Hebrews 10.23, is faithful. But the number 11, what God did through that was he took me to John 11.11. 11. And it's the story of Lazarus. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. And what, what happens is in John 11.11, 11, Jesus says this concerning Lazarus, that he's asleep, but that he's going to go and wake him up. And the disciples, you know, just, well, if he's asleep, just leave him alone. What's the point of going? And he tells them plainly, no, he's dead. And the Lord began to tell me that the things that are dead in our life, he's about to bring to life. Blow the dust off of hopes and dreams that we forfeited and given up on because he's causing the things that are dead to come to life in a greater way. I say all of that because where we're at now, currently in 2014, on Monday, January 6th, I was uh, asleep in my bed, and I'm going to say this just so you understand the importance of this and, and, uh, and understand that this just wasn't a natural door, but it was something God was doing in the Spirit. Uh, every single door in my bedroom was opened. It wasn't, it wasn't that there, it was wide open, but my wife and I, we always crack our doors you know, in the bathroom and, and in the hallways for our kids' rooms, just in case they ever need to get one of us or call for one of us. None of the doors upstairs are ever closed where we sleep or where our children sleep. Early in the morning on Monday, January 6th, I clearly and distinctly, with my eyes closed, closed, heard the sound of a doorknob being turned and a door being pulled open. And I began to wonder, God, what are you doing? What are you trying to say? Because it didn't bring me fear. It didn't terrify me. I wasn't concerned if somebody was in my room. And I began to seek the Lord about it. On Tuesday morning, the next day, God said this to me. He said, access granted. And he told me that perseverance has brought us to this point, but perseverance is going to cause us to step through. Because doors are transitionary places. They're transitionary points that take you from one room to the next. But I can't possess what's in a room. I can't possess what's in the other side of a door unless I step through. And this is the choice that God is putting before us right now. Because the things you've asked for, the things you've been crying out for, God has opened the door for, but he's asking you, are you willing to step through? Are you by faith? Because that's what the Lord is after. Some people are saying, well, if he's opened the door, then he's going to do all these things. He is, but he's smitten by faith, guys. He loves faith. And if perseverance has brought you here, it's going to take you through. For example, in Revelation 3, he writes to the church in Philadelphia, I have put an open door before you. I have placed an open door before you, and you, because you've kept the word of my perseverance, I believe because we've kept the word of the Lord's perseverance, because we haven't given up and haven't forfeited, but there's a lot in the body of Christ right now that just want to throw in the towel. I'm telling you, the Lord is asking, are you willing to persevere? Let me explain in greater detail what this open door is. Because when Hannah went into Shiloh, and when she prayed, there was a priest there by the name of Eli, and Eli uh, was, was wondering what it was that she was doing. And after she explained what it was she was doing and crying out for and praying for, Eli said this, Go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. Guys, that's the open door. The Lord has said yes, but Hannah still had to go 
and have relations with her husband before Samuel was conceived. There is still this thing that we have to do that the Lord is saying the door is open. What are you going to do with it this year? This is the year of fulfillment. This is the year of opportunity. Paul said doors of service have been opened to me. 2 Corinthians 2.12, 1 Corinthians 6.9. I want you to know this is our year. This is a banner year, but it requires your partnership with God. It's open. It's available. Are you going to step through? Will you persevere or will you throw in the towel? So let me pray for you guys, bless you guys, and I thank you for your amazing grace right now. God, I pray that these words would sink deep into every uh, listener's heart, every viewer's heart, God, that you would just continue to release comfort and exhortation, God, and edification over each and every one of us. May this be the year where the hopes and dreams are fulfilled, God, as you have said, God. Let it be done as you have spoken. Father, thank you for your amazing, amazing love. Let it come to pass, God, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' name. Bless you guys. Amen.